Hello again, this is Kevin Thomas with the At Home Film Festival. This week's theme is Movies of Christmas Past. I chose that title because these are older films, mostly from the 30s and 40s, but they don't have the shelf life that a lot of other movies that we watch every year, like Miracle on 34th Street and um, a Christmas Story and It's a Wonderful Life. So I'm going to bring a few other movies to your attention just in case you haven't seen of them. Some of them are a little popular, but mostly have gone unseen. I'm not really going to discuss this movie I'm showing you right now, I'll Be Seeing You. I didn't think it was available, but when I was looking for a trailer just to show, I found out you could watch this on YouTube. So why don't we watch this one together? But let's see what other seven movies I have in store this week, okay? also have another movie that I really haven't quite seen. I'm recommending Holiday Affair. I heard the radio show, which I thought was enchanting. And for you younger people, the radio shows are the podcast from the 1940s. But anyway, I was all planned to rent it so I could watch it and discuss it with you. But guess what? I found out it's coming on TCM this week. So why spend the money while watching on TCM? And if I miss the day it airs, TCM, the app is so great, you could watch movies maybe for a month that they just aired. So Holiday Affair is a romantic movie with Janet Lee, so it's good to see her not being psycho. And it also has Robert Mitchum in it, who we um, don't always see in lighthearted films. So let's watch Holiday Affair together. Can't wait. Tune in. So this movie is semi-popular because it screens every year and has a plot that you're probably familiar of. The Shop Around the Corner stars Jimmy Stewart and he works at a store and he falls in love and meets with a woman who is sort of a, the competition. But um, it's around the holidays, so that's how it ties into our theme. It's really a cute movie, but what I really like about it and what you might feel is familiar is it was remade years later as You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. So that's where this story kind of stemmed from. So this is the roots of that. So together, let's watch the shop around the corner and enjoy and feel enchanted and enlightened and happy. Our next two movies, I'm kind of calling them twins. They both were also colorized and they both have like a 6.6 .6 rating on IMDb and they both had title changes because they probably weren't super successful um, the first time they came out. So first we have Beyond Tomorrow, which became Beyond Christmas. This movie is about three guys that place a bet and they meet these two young up and coming people that are struggling. They help them out, but then they die. The three people, not the young couple. So they became their guardian angels from above. Hence why you see them looking like you could see transparent because that's how they did it in 1940. Super sweet movie. Um, the direction that the people go to isn't necessarily always happiness, but it's still interesting to watch to see what happens to the young couple as they find fame and fortune and love thanks to the guardian angels of beyond tomorrow or beyond Christmas. Watch it either way, and if you can't stand black and white, you could watch it in color. Um, black and white, I think, is better when they originated it that way, but you choose and pick one. Thank Our you. Another sort of twin movie is The Great Rupert, also known as A Christmas Wish when it was in color. So The Great Rupert is a very interesting, kind of weird tale about a family down on their luck who are squatters in a house. The mother here, prays for a miracle on Christmas Eve. All of a sudden, $1,500 comes flowing from the ceiling. Oh my God, where's that coming from? Is it God? Hello, God. Oh, it's in color now. Remember that you could watch it either black or white or color. Anyway, the owner of the house is seen here. He lives in the adjacent building and he gets a check every single week for $1,500. He doesn't trust the bank, so he puts it in the wall, which is adjacent to his tenant's building. So there happens to be this squirrel there who's taking the money and throwing it out every week like clockwork. So once a week, the poor family thinks that they're getting a rain of money of $1,500. 
Yes, they use it for themselves, but then they do good deeds. So that's part of the heartwarming part of the story. This movie really surprised me because I'm not a big fan of Jimmy Durante, but he was really good in this. The whole film is wonderful. Um, I like the little burgeoning love story and the triangle. And my favorite part I read, there's a squirrel in the movie who's the one that does the money. Some people thought that squirrel was real, but it is a real squirrel, but using stop action photography. <laughs> Very evident to us modern people, but I just thought that was a little funny tidbit. Anyway, watch um, Christmas Wish or The Great Rupert in black and white or color. Thanks. Here is the most current movie on the list from 1967, Fitzwillie. Fitzwillie is played by Dick Van Dyke, who I forget what a great actor he is because I saw Mary Poppins. But anyway, Dick Van Dyke plays a major domo or the head butler at a rich lady's house. Everybody that works there is involved in a band of thieves with him, <laughs> except for the new hire, Barbara Feldon. So part of the comedy is keeping their thievery away from Barbara Feldon and the madam of the house. But they pull off this big giant job at Gimbel's, Macy's competitor back in the day, on Christmas Eve that causes havoc, a riotousness happening in the store, which leads them to be able to steal all this money. Super funny, it ties into Christmas. So you watch it and enjoy it. It's seldom seen, so let's keep it on our list, okay? My last two movies come from the same star, Barbara Stanwyck. I was surprised she was able to crank out two Christmas movies because she's always good at the femme fatale or the vamp. But first we have Remember the Night. She plays a woman on trial. They put the trial on hold for Christmas. Fred McMurray, who was on the opposite side of the law, feels bad for her, so he bails her out and she's sort of forced to go with him home. And of course, they end up liking each other. You learn about her history and her past and why she does the things she does. Really sweet movie, not overly sweet, but it's one that people don't watch as much as other movies. So let's put this on our list. Barbara Stanwyck, Fred McMurray, Remember the Night. Remember the movie. So we're gonna end with a movie that I love more than anything. It's sort of classical because it was even remade, but it's not the big hit that other ones are. It's called Christmas in Connecticut. Barbara Stanwyck plays like a Martha Stewart type person who writes for a magazine with tips on cooking and housekeeping and raising a baby. Well, someone from the army ends up getting a special trip to go see her. They thought it'd make a great story for the magazine. The trouble is Barbara can't cook. She has no baby. She doesn't live in the country. She lives in Manhattan. So they have to fabricate this whole thing fake story with a fake husband and a fake baby that changes from blonde to brunette and sexes. Um, and it makes it really fun. See her flap her jacks, see her try to cook, see her try to ignore the advances of this hot military guy while she fakely has a husband. Christmas in Connecticut will certainly brighten your holiday. In the meantime, this is Kevin Thomas with the At Home Film Festival. Hope to see you next week. I love comments. Give me suggestions below. Please subscribe. Please share. Please hit notifications. But I'm going to see you next week. I can't wait.